Okay, uh, so for today, uh, we'll continue to take a look at uh, passage analysis, right? A uh, comparison of different texts that we have, right? And so uh, first of all, text A would be based on a uh, story of a father that we have, a uh, story of a father uh, sort of writing to his own daughter about the experience of uh, becoming uh, her father, right? Of uh, becoming a father, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, the uh, father, uh, the leader of the household in certain sense, right? And that uh, will take a look at text B, which would be more cartoon based that we have. Uh, also a story of a father that we have, uh, one a narrative and a cartoon, right? A version of it, right? That we'll be reading through and we'll try to analyze some of the effects of each of the medium, right? Uh, that we'll be taking a look at uh, in this uh, sort of video, right? That we'll take a look at, right? And then the second pair we'll take a look at about permafrost or, or a science article, right? That we'll be taking a look at, right? Okay, so let's, uh, much ado, let's go uh, straight into uh, the article, right, that we have. Uh, so as we see, right, uh, text A, uh, let's uh, read through it, right, as a class, right, a uh, story of a father, right, to his daughter, right, that he'll be writing to. So let's take a look. So, uh, uh, Sata, uh, becoming a father transformed me in ways that I could never have thought possible. I could never go back to being a person I used to do before. I used to be before. Uh, your arrival in my life brought an unimaginable joy and a large responsibility. I was no more just a husband, a son, or a promising employee of a fast-growing company. I was a father who had to measure up to the expectations his daughter would have of him at every stage of her life. Your birth raised the benchmark of my life in every aspect. My interactions at the workplace became more thoughtful and measured. The quality of my transactions with the, with the outside world more considerate, dignified, and mature. I felt the need to deal with every human being more sensitively and cautiously. After all, someday you would grow up and understand the world around you, and I didn't want you ever to think that I had done anything even remotely wrong. I'm often asked about the qualities that I have imparted to my children. I tell them that it is your mother who shouldered this great responsibility, and I'm ever so grateful to her for bringing you up to the fine individuals you are. She communicated values more by action than by talking about them. She taught Rohan and you the importance of simplicity and austerity. There was this one instance in Bangalore when you were selected for a school drama for which you were required to wear a special dress. It was in the mid 80s, Infosys had just begun, begun its operations and we did not have any money to spend on non-basic goods. Your mother explained to you that we would not be able to buy the dress and that you would have to drop out of the performance. Much later, you told me that you had not been able to understand or appreciate that incident. We realized it must have been a bit drastic for a child to forgo an important event in school, but we know you learned something important from that, the importance of austerity. Life has changed for us since then, and there is enough money. But you know, our lifestyle continues to be simple. I remember discussing with your mother the issue of sending your uh, kids to school by car once we were a little comfortable with money. But your mother insisted that Rohan and you go to school with your classmates in the regular Ethoric Shaw. You made great, great friends with the rickshaw's uncle and had fun with the other kids in the auto. The simplest things in life are often the happiest and they are for free. You would often ask me why there was no television at our home when the rest of your friends discussed stuff they watched on TV. Your mother de decided early on that there would be no TV in our home so that there would be time for things like studying, reading, discussions, and meeting friends. She insisted that it was important to create an environment conducive to learning at home. Therefore, every night we dedicated the time between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m to pursuits that brought the family together in a productive environment. While Rowan and you did your schoolwork, your mother and I read books on history, literature, physics, mathematics, engineering, or did any office work. It is quite well known fact that when a daughter gets married, a father has mixed feelings about it. He hates the fact that there is somebody else in his daughter's life with whom she shares her affections, a smart, confident, younger man who gets the attention that was earlier his alone. 
I too was a little sad and jealous when you told us that you had found your life partner. But when I met Rishi and found him to be all that you had described him to be, brilliant, handsome, and most importantly honest, I understood why you let your heart be stolen. It was then that I reconciled to sharing your affections with him. <clears throat> a few months ago, you made me a proud grandparent. If holding you in my arms for the first time gave me indescribable joy, seeing Krishna, your lovely daughter, for the first time at your home in Santa Monica was a different experience altogether. I wondered whether from now on I would have to behave like a wise grand old man, but then I realized the bonus to growing older and becoming a grandparent. I would have the joy of pampering a child. Besides, you know what they say about grandparents and grandchildren having a common enemy, the parent. I'm convinced Krishna and I will eventually exchange notes about you and be completely on the same page when it comes to criticizing you. As you pursue your goals and live a contented life, contented, contented life, remember that there is only one planet for us to live in, and that planet is now becoming endangered. Remember that it is your responsibility to pass on this planet to Krishna in the very condition that you got it from us. Take care, my child. Lovingly, Appa. Right? Adaptive Rainbow's founder, Nar Narantia Murthy's letter to his daughter from Sujya Mahan's uh, legacy letters for eminent parents to their daughters, uh, House India. Uh, so once again, uh, we do have a sort of a parental message, right, uh, of the father writing to his daughter, right, about uh, sort of the experience of how uh, being her own uh, father would have been like, also their relationship, right, uh, of with the mother and the daughter, and also between the mother and the father, right, that we have here as well, right. And uh, of how she's getting married, also how uh, he feels about that, right? Also, uh, the type of experiences they have been up to, right? That night dedicated, right? Mother and Red books on uh, history, literature, physics, mathematics, right? Office work. Uh, so once again, the experience of how that, right? Also the drama experience, right? A lot of different experiences that they would have had. And also uh, sort of uh, the experience of how uh, sort of sending her off to another family would have been like as well, right? So once once again, uh, sort of mother, uh, father, right, daughter, right, type of relationship and the sort of introspection about that, right, that we see, we do see, right, in this uh, sort of letter that we have, right, that we're able to find here. And uh, so once again, uh, we'll try to go over uh, the next uh, text that we have, which would be sort of more of a cartoon based uh, sort of article. And we'll try to compare and uh, sort of contrast uh, the, the visual effects, right? Uh, sort of the literary effects of having a letter versus like a comic strip, right? That we have that uh, sort of different medium, right? Has different effects, right? That it uh, sort of portrays and uh, sort of uh, encompasses as well, right? That we'll be able to take a look. Uh, so the next trip, the, or uh, Luna Barboon, right? A half man, half moon monkey trying to make sense of it all, right? So it's uh, sort of a more comic strip that we have, right? Will it always be like this daddy, right? We do have a sort of family, right? With a comic strip, nobody at all changes, right? We'll take a look. Uh, your body, family life, the world, right? All of the changes, right? The father sort of reading a book for the child, right? That we have everything changes well almost everything uh look at how the boy would have grown up right and that there is a, a new sibling or a born baby right who grew up right so time is being uh sort of passing right every sort of block right that we do have time for transitioning right mother giving birth to another baby right the baby becoming a uh, bigger right a sibling right a uh, bigger sibling everything changes right the the boy will grow up right and become a man himself right and uh, he would pass on that book right well almost everything and now the father has become a grandfather and the father and now has a child right and thus uh well almost everything does that make sense right i think so right and the father and the son becomes a father right reading to his own uh daughter or father a uh, daughter or a son right that he would have right and so the sort of life cycle of how everything changes right the son becomes a father right and the father becomes a grandfather and would uh would no longer be there and so the transition of time, right? How uh, the generation sort of move on, moves on, right? 
and the book, uh, the act of reading uh, is passed on to the next generation of the uh, sort of uh, family sort of tradition that might be passed on to the next generation, right? That we might be able to find. And so once again, a lot of uh, sort of transition in time that we find, right? And also uh, the father, the son, right? Grandparents, right? The type of uh, sort of passing of time, passing of tradition, right? And how everything changes, time passes, right? Life changes, right? We move on, right? With the next generation, right all of these sort of transitions and changes that we're able to find uh, with this comic strip that we have here as well right so it's uh, sort of different effects that we do feel here as well of uh, sort of pathos of feeling of uh, triggered through the visual effects or the visual sort of representation of these figures that we have as well as uh, the narrative which would be sort of more letter uh, based right a lot of the sort of pathos also in those uh, sort of type of language that we have but also a uh, comic strip also also has a type of specific type of effect that it has right with the visual elements that we're able to see of the father grandfather right the son daughter right and sort of the passing of time right also of the generation that we're able to see as well so different effects that a letter would have and the comic strip would have right that we were able to see of the visual uh, sort of uh, and uh, sort of more uh, so language based right uh, is a more sort of uh, sort of uh, 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 sort of uh, conventional sort of type of writing that we're more used to, right, that we may be able to find, right, but the different type of effects that a letter and a comic strip that each of the medium would have, right, that we're able to sort of think about uh, in these sort of pair of texts, right, that we have here as well, right. Uh, so the next article that we have would be on the topic of the uh, most northernly town in the world is a risk of disappearing, USA Today, right, a news article that we have, whereas the next article that we have would also be based on permafrost, the, the topic of permafrost, and we'll try to compare and contrast these sort of two articles, right, that we'll be taking a look at uh, in this particular video, right, that we have here today as well, right, so uh, how about we read uh, together, right, as a sort of uh, uh, as a class, right, that we'll be taking a look at. The article would read, uh, the most northerly town in the world is at risk of disappearing, right? The article would read, so uh, long year been Norway, it's freezing, snowing, and so far north that the sun won't rise again until March, but the 2,000 residents of the world's most northerly town wish it were much colder. That's because the weather here on uh, Norway's Arctic Circle Island of Svalbard is tame in comparison to what it should be, despite the icy breeze that flows and from the sea. Residents and experts fear this tight-knit community where polar bears outnumber people is at risk of disappearing because temperatures are rising at an accelerated pace compared to the rest of the world. Every single consecutive month has been above average, said Kim Holman, International Director of the Norwegian Polar Institute. We have tremendous increase in the wintertime temperatures, almost 10 degrees Celsius, 18 degrees Fahrenheit, increase over the past 30 years or so. Wherever I look, there is a change, very obvious change. The snow melts early in the spring. The glaciers are diminishing by a foot, two feet per year in thickness. Holman said from the Sil Svalbard South Center in Long Year Bend, it influences life, it influences the landscape, and it influences the people, of course. Melting permafrost and higher temperatures have caused havoc here in recent years, triggering sometimes deadly avalanches on the steep mountains that flank the town. Houses have been destroyed while roads in some areas have been closed or declared unsafe to live because of the risk. Within the past uh, two years, hundreds of residents have been affected, some having to evacuate from their homes. Mark Zip Sabatini, 949, a local journalist and long year been resident, said he lost his apartment because the melting permafrost created dangerous cracks in the fountain. Sabatini, who is originally from Alaska, said he is now bankrupt. We lost the, uh, we lost the, a uh, whole value of the apartment with no insurance compensation or any compensation. We had people who were left broke and had to leave the island. People like me who've been left bankrupt and living off uh, borrowed funds and begging, literally begging at times for just barely enough money to stay alive, an emotional Sabatini said. Mark Sabatini, a local journalist has, journalist, has lost his home and is now bankrupt due to melting permafrost. In front of him sits the alternative English language newspaper he publishes. 
The region was seeing an amplification of global warming. Arctic climate expert David Barber of the University of Manitoba told USA Today. He warned that projections predict profound effects on the physics, biology, uh, geochemistry of the Arctic. The consequences won't be confined to the Arctic. Melting ice sheets from the north have the ability to influence ocean currents that also help control the climate further south. Long Yerbin, a former mining town established in 1906 by American businessman John Munro, Long Yerbin has diversified its economy in recent years, profiting from a uh, adventurous tourist as well as researchers studying the Arctic. The changing conditions could put these newer economic developments at risk. At Scott Turner Glacier, where we do our ice cave tours, we see from year to year how fast the ice is melting. So Martin Monk, uh, founder of the Green Dog Tour Company in Svalbard, in worst case scenario comes and there is no snow during winter, I doubt anyone would like to live here. No tourism in four dark months with no light reflecting white snow and no way to go on out on tours. Yeah, with the annual average temperature of long year been uh, expected to reach above uh, freezing in the next year or two, a phenomenon never been never seen in the town's recorded history, there's frustration and anger. Men has uh, changed the atmosphere home and lamented. There are many people I hear now who are discussing uh, moving down to mainly mainland Norway, but Long Yerbin is still a place that many newcomers find extremely attractive and many fall in love with it. It is resilient. USA Today, Garner USA Today. So once again, uh, sort of uh, how permafrost has caused the uh, place to disappear, right, with the uh, sort of uh, newspaper article, right, that would have uh, sort of uh, uh, marked, right, a journalist, right, has lost his home, not bankrupt due to melting permafrost, right? It says that the alternative to English language newspaper publishers, right? And so once again, uh, sort of how the town is at risk of disappearing that we have with the uh, advent of uh, permafrost, with the happening of permafrost, right, that we're able to see. Whereas the next article would be a sort of more of a scientific study about what permafrost actually is, right? Whereas the first article would have been the disappearing of the city. The second article is a scientific sort of explanation or further sort of uh, sort of documentation or uh, research about the permafrost itself, right? That would be additional sort of, uh, sort of uh, uh, information or uh, sort of research study that we'll be able to see with the graphs and charts, right? That will be based on uh, sort of the scientific research, right? That it will be citing that we have here as well, right? That we'll be able to take a look. Uh, so reading through the next article, right, uh, would be uh, uh, environmental monitoring, uh, would be uh, permafrost, right? Uh, an important aspect, updated 16 March uh, 2018, an important aspect of climate change in the Arctic is the melting of the permafrost, a thick sur surface layer of soil that remains frozen throughout the year. In Svalbard, monitoring of uh, permafrost is ongoing in several boreholes, including so 20 kilometers from Long Yerbun. Heating and thawing of uh, permafrost may result in greater instability in hillsides, increasing the probability of landslides and avalanches. Thawing permafrost can damage buildings buildings and infrastructure and cultural heritage sites and coastal areas are exposed to increased erosion. Casual factors would be the warming of the permafrost at J Jensen is first and foremost a response to the rise in the air temperature in recent decades. Studies so far show that any changes in the snow cover have had no effect on the permafrost at Jensen Hogan. This is because the locality is extremely exposed to wind and the ground around the borehole is blown free of snow for large parts of the winter. What is being monitored? Ground temperature and permafrost, Jensen Hogan, right? And so the graphs that we have, right? Uh, they're able to see the thickness of active layer in permafrost and so Hogan, right? Active layer that we have. Again, uh, sort of the status and trend would be uh, permafrost uh, monitoring began in 1998. Analysis showed that temperature in the upper part of the permafrost is rising on average 0 0.8 degrees Celsius per decade, and this is the rise that has been accelerating during the past decade. Rising temperatures in the permafrost have been recorded right down to depths of 80 meters during the time the monitoring has been taking place. 
The active layer, the permal soil layer of the permafrost that thaws in the summer has become 25 to 30 centimeters thicker since 1998. Consequences would be all buildings in the civil settlement are built on piles built, driven into the permafrost and roads, bridges, airports, and other infrastructure are also constructed on permafrost. When warming and thawing of the permafrost occurs, the infrastructure may be affected in the longer term. In addition, uh, the permafrost is essential for stabilizing steep mountain sites, which may become more unstable when warming takes place. This will have uh, consequences for traveling and also potentially for animal life. If, for example, areas with Arctic box stands become unstable and collapse, many cultural heritage remains in small birds are situated in the shore zone where they may be vulnerable to increasing erosion in the future. On a circumpolar level, the most important is consequence of the warming and the of the permafrost is nevertheless the large volumes of greenhouse gases like CO2, carbon dioxide, and methane, CH4, may be released if ever deeper layers of the permafrost thaw. These gases have been kept out of the atmosphere because the organic carbon has been frozen in the ground. The release of such greenhouse gases may lead to a further rise in the temperature and thawing of the permafrost. This is one of the many feedback mechanisms in the Arctic, and attempts are continuing being made to improve the estimates of the emissions from thawing permafrost. Uh, so once again, uh, sort of consequences, status and trend, right? What type of uh, sort of ca causal factors, what is uh, being monitored? So what effect does the permafrost have, right? If the first article would have been uh, the about the account of the disappearing of the city itself, right? The next article would be about the permafrost that caused the disappearance of that city, right? With the charts and diagrams and the scientific research of what uh, happened sort of with the causal factors, the status and trend, consequences of the permafrost itself, right? So first would be sort of more social science based, right? What this happened in a certain city, right? Uh, the journalist having to use another place to do his work, right? As the city is disappearing. Whereas the second would be more science based, where in that there will be charts and diagrams and scientific numbers and studies to back up why permafrost would have happened. And also the sort of consequences, the causal factors of the permafrost, right? That we would have been able to see, right? A more of a social science or a newspaper article, whereas this next, the latter would be more of a scientific study or a research study, right? That would be backing up the science uh, sort of behind the happening of why the, the uh, permafrost would have happened or what the actual sort of scientific consequences of that permafrost would have been, right? That we would have been able to take a look. So once again, we'll take a look at more sort of articles and more uh, sort of uh, text, right? Uh, paper one, right? That we'll take a look in order to uh, have more compare and contrast, right? Uh, sort of articles and uh, text, right? That we'll also be taking a look at, right? In the, uh, in the uh, sort of future, right? Videos to come.